Hello everyone, my name is David Pike, the Connector Geek. I'm joined today by Alexander Vilm from AMS Osram, and we're going to talk about something a little bit different to my normal subject, which is connectors. We're going to talk about UV radiation, and specifically UVC radiation. So Alexander, welcome to the call. Thanks. Um, we'll launch straight in with the first question, which is what is UVC radiation? Okay, UVC radiation is part or is an optical radiation, and it's actually far below the visible range that we have. So for, for the human eye, we have the radiation around 400 to 800 nanometer, and everything below 400, that is UV radiation. And then there are three groups, UVA, UVB, and UVC. And this UVC radiation is really further down, down to 280 to 200 nanometers. Okay, um, and this is something that, that we don't necessarily experience. Um, I think you've told me before that the, the atmosphere actually absorbs a lot of the UVC radiation that we get from, from the sun. Um, so it's something that we, we're not usually experiencing, but it has some practical uses. So, so UVC radiation is used in, in a wide range of industries. What is it that we use it for? Yeah, exactly. As, as you mentioned, so we... We are protected by our atmosphere. So UVC radiation is not hitting us down here on ground level Earth. So it's only UVA and UVB. So UVC is completely absorbed. And that's actually the, the good part because um, all the microorganisms that we want to treat with UVC radiation, they never had the need to create any kind of protection mechanism against this one. So UVC um, radiation is used to treat microorganisms, any kind of microorganisms. You can treat bacteria, viruses, fungus, any kind of microorganisms can be treated because it acts directly on the DNA. So UVC radiation is optical radiation that has and its photons, they are strong enough to break open parts of the DNA and therefore a virus is inactivated or bacteria, for example, they cannot produce, uh, reproduce anymore. And so that means that we've, we've got a use for UVC, specifically in terms of things like decontamination and disinfection. That's correct, correct isn't it? Exactly. So it's, it's used for decades already in, in especially drinking water uh, or municipal water treatment, where we really want to make sure that there are no contamination or no bacteria and pathogens inside our drinking water. So that is one part, but also for surface and air treatment, you can use this kind of radiation. So wherever you want to have a, a clean surface, a clean uh, air or no pathogens in water, this is what you can do or where you can treat it with UVC radiation. Okay, so we've already mentioned that UVC radiation from the sun is absorbed by the atmosphere. So we need some way of generating it. How has UVC radiation traditionally been generated for use in, in industrial applications? Yeah, so you may know the, the office lighting when there was still the TA tubes, uh, that you had the fluorescent tubes. Those are actually UV lamps. So they, they have inside, they create UV light. And then they convert it to visible light, which is what we use in the office. But if you take out the converter and if you change the glass to a quartz glass, then you can really emit directly the UV radiation. And this is UVC and it's emitted at 254 nanometer mainly. Um, and this is the, so the low pressure mercury lamps or the medium pressure mercury lamps. Those have been the traditional sources of UVC up to now. But of course, using that kind of technology has a, a certain number of disadvantages. Um, you've, you've mentioned that, that these things have mercury in them as one example. Obviously, it, it means that you've got to be very careful when using those anywhere around food or water, haven't you? Yeah. So um, since, since a couple of years only, there is an alternative available, which would be the LED. But if you, you mentioned it, it's if you take a normal fluorescent tube and you imagine you have the glass, you have mercury inside. So these are quite fragile. Also, they have a certain warm up time, for example. Um, and you, if you switch them very often, this is not very good for the lifetime of the traditional lamps. And those are actually also the benefits for UVC LEDs that we have nowadays. So they are really small, they are very robust, so there is no glass that can break. They don't contain mercury, so this is something for the future. Uh, when we talk about mercury ban in the future, um, you can switch them on and off as many times as you want, like you also operate them at uh, pulse width modulation to adjust the brightness level if you want. So this is, these are all the, the benefits and 
one from my pers- uh, my point of view, the the biggest benefit is really the optical point of view. So you basically have a point light source, and from this point light source, you can just attach any kind of optics and easily adjust and bring the light or the radiation where it has to be or where it should be. That is difficult if you have a long tube that emits in the whole uh, 360 degree range. It's difficult to focus this light to a special area where you want to have it and where you want to treat it. So this is a clear benefit for the new LEDs that we have. When we were talking and when we were planning for this call, you actually mentioned that there was an interesting aspect to to UVC LEDs, and it was to do with the efficiency. Um, And you mentioned that the the UVC LEDs that we've got here, they might be in certain ways less efficient than the traditional lamps that have been used. But because you can use them as a a point source and use them with optics to, to focus the radiation, the whole system could be more efficient. Can you explain a little bit more about that for me? Yeah, so it's true. The the UVC LEDs that you can get today, they are between 2 and 7% efficiency. If you compare them to a low-pressure mercury lamp, it's around 20% plus. So there is a big gap. And also the, the, the price performance of an LED is far below a, a mercury lamp right now. But as I mentioned, if you have a, a lamp then you want to direct the light to, for example, you want to collimate it and focus it down to a, an, an area. Or if you want to treat it in the packaging industry where you want to just disinfect a yogurt cup or something like that. You really want to focus all the light on this small area and inside this cup. That is really difficult with a, with a conventional lamp. And, and here the big difference in, comes into the system design. So if you build a system, with a light source that is not as efficient as the other, other one, but the system itself can be much more efficient from an optical point of view than the conventional one, then you can even outperform conventional lamps. So that is already happening with upper air treatment devices. In these devices, LEDs are already outperforming conventional lamps because you have to really create a very, very narrow beam, which is extremely difficult with lamps and what they actually do is they throw away a lot of the radiation that they produce so in the end leds can be already more efficient in a system approach so we've seen that uvc leds in a whole system can can be far more efficient uh, than traditional methods so where can these uvc leds be used what are some of the most exciting applications for them at the moment so right now from my perception is the for example, small water reactors to really disinfect the water that comes out of your water tap at home. This is an application that cannot even be addressed with conventional lamps. Because if you imagine that you just open the water tap and uh, you draw water for 10 seconds, a normal conventional lamp cannot warm up that fast. And in addition, if you switch them on and off all the time, the lifetime is reduced. So for an LED, that is a perfect application. You can integrate it in a very small reactor. The small form factor, again, helps with the optics design to get really the radiation directly into the water where it has to be used. And on top, it's a digital light source. So you can operate it easily with electronics. And if you combine it with our UV sensor, you can also build up a monitoring system. So the whole system is monitored by a sensor and you can adjust the dose really to the need that you have. And you can document it. Imagine um, uh, medical applications where you have to document that a certain uh, UVC disinfection or a UVC treatment has been applied to a surface. This, this can all be combined in a very easy way because of the electronic nature of the LED and the sensor. So we've also, we've talked about the use of UVC in water treatment, water purification. Uh, you've mentioned it in medical applications and you, we've been talking occasionally about the, the idea of using UVC in food preparation, the, the, the food industry. What other areas can you use UVC in um, there are numerous of areas. So let me, let me just draw some examples. Um, the advantage of, of the LED is really that you have the UVC radi- radiation at hand if you, if you only need a very low amount of radiation to treat, for example, a water dispenser. You have a water tank and you just want to um, treat the water inside so that it stays free of pathogens. You can have just one little LED 
and treat it all the time. So you have hours for the treatment. So that is really a very uh, nice example. But you can also have small boxes where you want to disinfect your mobile phone with. You can have... Uh, you can use it in, in, in white goods, in washing machines or in coffee machines. Wherever you have the challenge with microorganisms that should not grow there, you have now a small light source available to treat exactly this part of the system that you want to um, treat with UVC to keep the bacteria away. And something else that's that's been very relevant over the last few years, we've been talking a lot about um, airborne contamination. Obviously, the, the COVID uh, pandemic has made a lot of people very much aware of of the air they breathe. And from what I remember you mentioning, UVC can be used in, in air preparation in, in terms of filtering air in, in a building or in public transport. That's something where LEDs have really got an advantage, isn't it? Exactly. So... As I mentioned, you can treat water, surfaces, and also air. And when we talk about the air treatment, and we all uh, experience the, the challenge that we have when we have shared rooms or, or shared environments. So there is also a place where, where germs and viruses can spread. And so UVC systems have already been introduced in air treatment devices. And if you just imagine that an air treatment uh, fixture is basically a, a rod where you just uh, um, pump through the air from so entering from one side, getting out from the other side. In the center, you are uh, ir treating it with UVC radiation. And now if you imagine that you, you have, again, if you have a traditional lamp inside, then the free path lengths of the photons is basically from the lamp to the wall of this fixture. But if you are able to collimate all the light from the LED and just uh, shine it along this whole tube, then you have a, a much longer uh, path length for the photons to really interact with the pathogen. And that is also where we coming back to the system approach, where the complete system can be much more efficient. And then we are not uh, so uh, depending on the source efficiency again. And that also brings us on to, to a quick subject about safety. You've mentioned the use of UV sensors. Because, of course, UVC has the ability to be dangerous to, to humans when shine when it's shone directly on skin, for example. So we need to be careful when it's being used. Um, and you mentioned when we were planning again, you mentioned the idea of using UV sensors in shared areas and the ability to switch them on and off. But we do need to be careful with UVC radiation, don't we? Yes, so you're completely right. So UVC radiation, you cannot apply to human beings, plants, animals, any. You, you're not allowed to apply it to people. Um, so there are very strict guidelines on the maximum dose that you can apply, and the, the dose is actually very low. So in most of the systems, you have enclosed fixtures in where you're treating then the medium, um, or you have to shield it. And again, sensors could help to really monitor, for example, a room, or if you have a motion sensor, really um, to, to detect if someone is entering a room and if you have a, a room treatment with UVC, you can switch it on and off and just react instantly so that you are not endangering any kind of uh, any person that is entering the uh, certain zone where the UV radiation is, is switched on. So we've covered lots of things about UVC LEDs uh, and we've seen how they can be used in applications with, with the public and with food preparation, with water. So Alexander, if we were looking specifically at UVC LEDs, what would be your advice to designers? Why should they be going for the LED solution over traditional lamps? Well, it's simple. It's it's the future. <laughs> so we we are working very strongly on improving the, the efficiency and price performance of our LEDs. So and it's just a matter of time by when we can replace the lamps. And it happened before in general lighting, it happened before in automotive, in horticulture lighting. So in all these applications, we had conventional light sources and they have been replaced by LEDs because there are so many advantages. So if you start now designing a new system, I would really advise you to start with a light source that is basically future-proof. Um, we don't know what happens with the mercury ban on the other side. Uh, and if you really build a unique system based on LED, which is still new, you can also differentiate you uh, yours design from all the other designs that you can that are most likely already on the market based on conventional lamps 
and the ability to combine it with a sensor in a very easy digital way that is, in my opinion, in the future for this light source in this application. That's fantastic stuff. I and mean, here at Design Spark, we've we've championed the use of LEDs for for a long time, not least because of their their usefulness in terms of efficiency, uh, reduced energy costs, and their long life. And obviously, this is a, a wonderful example of another reason why LEDs are at the future when we compare them to traditional light sources. And as Alexander said, although at the moment these UVC LEDs are not as efficient as traditional methods, we are still very much at the early stages of this development. And in the future, these things are going to get more efficient, more effective, the ability to apply these, this radiation at the specific point that you need it, and the ability to control it on and off very, very easily makes it absolutely a solution for the future. So. Alexander, I'm going to say thank you so much for sharing all this information with us. That's been so useful. And to, to listeners, I, I'd like to say there's tons more information that you can see. We've got lots of information about LEDs and specifically some, some UVC LED information on DesignSpark. We've got lots of information on RS Web that you can go and look at. And of course, AMS Osram have lots of information that they can share with us about how these things are going to be used, not just now, but in the future. So, Alexander, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for listening and we'll see you again soon.